in this video I just want to quickly you know explain the differences between posts and pages and really the best way to do this is to actually show you so if we go to this very popular website if you look along the top here in our menu then pages like your privacy policy about us contact these are pages and the information on these pages don't change very often and usually you wouldn't put comments allow comments on these pages so pages are, are, are ideal for for information that's not really time sensitive but information that you want your users to be able to access at all times on the other hand and and pages are actually very static so so they're more static on the other hand posts are tend to be time sensitive for example all these links here on the side are for posts and if you if you look here it's like news updates this one is five minutes ago this one is 14 minutes ago etc and so we use posts for information that is more time sensitive like I said like news and updates about your site or your business and generally you you do allow comments on posts um, but it's totally up to you 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 can remove comments from posts and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a future video and you you can add comments to pages you do have the option to but this is just to quickly show you some of the differences between posts and, and, and pages and one more thing about posts is that they tend to appear in your site as you can see uh, here in reverse chronological order so newer posts will show up first so eventually what will happen is that you, if you have a lot of posts then depending on how you set your website up then all the posts will eventually disappear off your front page okay so that's just a quick overview of the difference between posts and pages in this video we're going to create a post and here we are at our home page of our website and as you can see here there is a post that was already created called hello world and by default posts will appear on your home page and there is an option to change that and we'll look at that in a future video but this post of course was created when we installed WordPress and it's just there for you to get a feel of how posts look on your website so to create a new post we of course have to log into our admin area at WP admin and from our menu select posts and we will see a list of all the posts that have been created on our website and as you can see our hello world post is here and we have the option to edit it quick edit trash or view the post now you should delete this post because of course it's there for demonstration purposes but i won't delete it just yet as I want you to see how it will be affected once we create a new post so to do that we select add new from the top there and before we actually create the post there are a few things on this page I want you to become familiar with the first thing is at the very top here in the right hand corner is the screen options now this allows you to just customize what options appear on this screen and you will see that a couple of boxes are already ticked formats categories tags featured image and if you go and look at the right hand side here you will see format categories and tags so if you wanted to remove those options you would just untick the boxes and there are some additional options here that you probably do want to tick such as the discussion box and what that will do is allow you to control 
comments and chat back and ping backs on your posts. Okay, the next thing we want to look at is the title. Of course, you'd want to name your post and remember, based on how we set up our permalinks, the name of your post will appear in the URL. Okay, and you, you do have the option to adjust it and I will show you how to do this. The next area is this area here, which is our WYSIWYG editor. Now, WYSIWYG is an acronym that stands for what you see is what you get. So essentially, whatever you type here and is basically how it will look on the front end of your site. If we go back over to the right hand side, you will see a couple of options. Right now the the post is in draft status because we haven't typed in anything and we haven't selected publish. So once we'd finish we'd select publish. And uh, there are a couple of other options such as the visibility, right? By default all posts will be set to public, but you do have the option to select the post as password protected where Everyone will be able to see the post, but they will be prompted to enter a password to actually see the content. And uh, another option is the private option, which no one will actually be able to see these posts at all, except for your logged in users, which you have granted access to, such as your admin and editors, etc. And uh, the password protected option is actually a great option to use to to offer content to your members, paid content, etc. Okay, and if we go further down, we see, so let me set this back at public, and you will see format. Now, by default, there's a standard format for all WordPress posts, and that's what we are going to use, but you do have some other options, such as a side, image, video, and what these options would do, if you select them, they will, of course, for example, if you were to select image and you had an image in your post, which is obviously why you'd want to select it, it would just highlight how the post would be displayed on your website would highlight that image. And the same for video, audio, etc. Now, how it is displayed really does depend on the theme that you're using. So that is something you would have to test out to see the results. But for, for now, we're going to use a standard format because that will allow us to do to add all those types of media and also there are categories now this allows you to basically you know put your posts in particular in a particular order so for example if your website was about sports and you covered soccer and basketball then you could create a category just by adding add new category and name it soccer so all the posts that you had about soccer would go in that category you could just select it and it makes it a lot easier well for you in terms of keeping your website in order and also for your users who would maybe are just interested in in soccer uh, or users who are just interested in basketball to access those posts and of course there are tags which is really more for search engine op optimization which just you know uh, allows you to you know give a description to say, to say what your post is all about and you can also set a featured image which would show up say in an expert excerpt of your post on the front end of your site so that people can have an idea of what your post is all about. Now this video is actually getting a, little, a bit long so I'm going to pause here and in the next video we will actually create some content in our post. Okay so let's go ahead now and add some content and create our post. Now the first thing we want to do is to name our post so I'll just name this test post and I've already prepared some text to add 
and this is Latin, so if it doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. It's just for us to have some text to play around with. And <coughs> I mentioned you'll be able to edit the text in the WYSIWYG editor in a similar way that you would edit it in any word processor, word processor such as Microsoft Word. So you have the option to bold, add italics, strike throughs, and if you notice, if you just put your cursor over the icons, it will tell you exactly what it does. So you can add an unordered list, an ordered list, block codes, align, left, etc, etc, etc. Okay. And we have a, we have a button here that says show or hide the kitchen sink and pressing this button will either remove or add that second line of options. Okay, which would give us additional styling options such as adding paragraph tags, heading tags, just highlight text. So very quickly I'm just going to go and just highlight some text, make it bold. Highlight some more text. Let me undo that. If I wanted to make this entire line a coat, then just highlight these block coats and last but not least, let's let's add a link. So if we highlight the text and we select this button here that looks like a chain link and then we just put the destination that we want our link to go to. You can name the link for your own purposes and you have the option to open the link in a new window or tab which I like to do so that visitors can easily get back to my site if the link is an external link. And all you have to do now is go over and select publish. But of course, as we mentioned, you could put <coughs> excuse me, you could put your post in a category. I created two other categories just while I was testing, and but. I'm just going to add this post to the uncategorized because that's, that was our default category. And I won't add any tags or featured image, you know, just, just so that you can see exactly what the post would look like. And I'll hit publish. And just a few quick things. You would have seen the the URL for this post would now include the name of the post, which is why the name is so important. And if you wanted to change it, you could just select edit. For example, if <coughs> the name of your post was very long and it created a long URL, you could just shorten it. But in this case, I'm going to leave it as is. <coughs> you just select OK and I'm going to go ahead and view the post. <coughs> okay, so there's our post with our styling, bold, our coats, and our link, which if we click it, will go to the destination that we have put in at google.com. Okay, that's Taking some time to load, but there you go, Google. Okay, now if we go back to our site and we just select visit site. Actually, let me do this from dashboard. Select a new tab www.videosidekick.com select enter and it's still showing our original post I'm 
Maybe it's because I'm still logged in. Okay, let me open up another browser. Go to our home page. And, and there you go. There's our new post. And as you can see, the previous post, which was Hello World, now appears below our new post. And that's what will happen to new posts. The more and more posts you create, then they will fall down in the order. Okay, so that's it for this video. We will look at creating pages next. The process for creating a page is very similar to creating posts and to do this we go to pages and we will see a list of all our existing pages. A sample page was created during our installation of WordPress and again you should trash this page because of course it's there for demonstration but I won't do that just yet just so that you can see how pages will be displayed on a website when especially after we create our new page so to create the new page we just select add new and here we have our WYSIWYG editor similar to when we were creating a post and the first thing we want to do is name the page I'm going to call this page about me and again I prepared some text and the process is similar we can make the text bold etc in this case I'm going to use some of the to use this top line here use the heading one tag and okay let me undo that didn't mean to apply it to the to all of the text let me just press enter and separate this line of text and then so that first line has become a heading and I just center align it and you can just play around again with the text uh, underline this bit here and so on and so forth so after we've completed our editing, we can just go ahead and publish. Now, there are just a, a, a slightly different set of options for a page. And you remember when we were creating posts, we had categories over here on the right. But now instead, we have page attributes. Now, if we go back up here to our screen options, let me just select discussion. So that which controls our comments and of course there's, there's an author option which which allows you to 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 assign an author to the the page now the author information actually doesn't show up for pages actually in posts so you know, if you ever wanted to change the author for your post, you could just select that option. But if we go back to page attributes now, what you can do here is select a parent page for this page. So what would happen is that if we selected the sample page as a parent page, then in our menu, this page would appear below the sample page. And we also have the option to select templates. Now, the default template will be, you know, as it is, the, as it says, the default layout for your website, which <coughs> if, you, if we go to our homepage, www.videosidekick.com, and we go to our sample page, Then this is our default template, our content on the right, and our sidebar on the left with our menu at the top, and we have a footer here at the bottom. Now if we go back to our so we also have the option to create a full width page which would remove the sidebars so that our content would 
take center stage and there's also a contributor page. Now to be honest, I'm not quite familiar what this page does, but um, it's something you can test out. Uh, different themes will give you different templates. This particular theme is a portfolio type theme. So it may have something to do with that. But like I said, depending on the, the, te the theme that you're using, different templates will be listed here and you know the, the best way to figure out what it does is just sil just test create a test page select the template and see what happens and if we are satisfied with our content and um, just one thing i like to remove comments and chat box from my pages but it's up to you you can allow comments if you'd like and we just go ahead and select publish and again our URL will include the name of our page so it will be our main URL wpvideopsyche.com forward slash about me and again you can edit this URL you can view the page or you can get a short link and Let's go ahead and view the page and there you go, an about me page and the name of the page will be at the top and our content. And if we go back to our home page. and visit our site and again because I'm logged in it's not showing the update so let me just go into another browser and head back over to our site Okay, so I've refreshed the page and just go to our home page and what you will see here now is that our new page, our about me page has been added to our menu. Now, in most themes this will be the default action. Once you add a new page it will be added automatically to your main menu. Now, Again, like I said, it depends on the theme, but in another video, I'll show you how to create custom menus so that we can control exactly what appears in your menu menu areas, because as you can imagine, not every single page you create, you'd want to be displayed in your menu. For example, if you have a private page for, for members or a download page for your product. You certainly wouldn't want that to be shown in your main navigation and additionally if you were to create a lot of pages then this your menu error would be would be um, quite jumbled so in another video I'll show you how to create custom videos but for now that's it for pages and yeah, that's it for this video in this video, we'll take a look at how we can add media to our posts and pages. And the first thing I want to do is introduce you to our media library. And of course, there's nothing in there because we haven't added any media. So we're just going to select add new. And what the media library does is it, it stores all media that you upload directly to your WordPress site and you can put media in here to either use in your posts and pages or media to be download, downloaded by your users or, or visitors. So 
as you can see here it says you can simply drop files here drag and drop files or select files and below here it gives you a maximum upload file size of 8 megabytes now if you have files that are larger than 8 megabytes you'd have to use some alternative method of putting it on your site such as FTP or file transfer protocol but we'll take a look at that in a different video but um so now we're going to keep the files simple so I have some files here on my desktop video so I'll just drag that in um, also document and I've dropped those two files but let me just go back in so you can see that you can also select the files and they're on my desktop so I've already added the video and the PDF so I just want to add a an image and I think I got there uh, the PDF oh there you go so I actually added so from here from the screen you have the option to do some editing now let's start with the image now if you select edit take it to another screen and you can see our image now I plan to use this image for our about me page and there are a couple of things that we need to take note of here one of the things that happens when you upload the media to your media library is that uh, an attachment page will be created so if you click view attachment page then there is a standalone page on WordPress that has your media and in this case it's an image so it's being displayed but for some of your media such as a Word document then what would happen is you just see a link <coughs> excuse me and if you select that link you'd be able to download it back to our edit page and of course an image so you have the option to add a caption which would appear below the image so if it's an about me image then you could just put my name and the alternative text is really for search engine optimization Search engines can't read images, they, they basically only read text. So because it doesn't know what your image is about, then this alternative text just lets the search engine know that this is an image of you. And basically just lets, lets it know what the image is all about. And on the right hand side here, you just have some additional information about the image, the dimensions, but in this field here is a direct link to the image okay so if you were to copy and paste in a new tab then you would see our image there you go okay so this video is getting a bit long so let me pause here and we'll pick up in another video